There's a lot of cleanup today in Pendleton County, including this home that turned over with three people inside. We are tracking the potential of more rounds of rain arriving here for Christmas. It's fine out there for the rest of the evening, but tomorrow we could be talking about high water issues. I'll track those chances. We talk about donations a lot this time of year, but the Salvation Army of Lexington is focusing on the power of prayer today. This is WKYT News at 5. A Kentucky man speaking out after surviving a frightening experience during strong storms. Last night, an EF-1 tornado flipped his home in Pendleton County, sending it down an embankment. He and two other people ended up trapped inside. WKYT's Victor Puente was there as the man returned to his home today to see what's left. It's our top story at 5. The three people who were inside this mobile home survived being tossed about inside of it as it was thrown over a hill. Dallas Arthur says they knew a storm was coming. They weren't planning on spending the night at their home on Bethel Lane. Well, my wife and sister-in-law was in the living room and I was in the kitchen. We were just getting ready to try to get out of here. He checked the weather outside and saw some trees swaying. And it wasn't all that bad. But then all of a sudden I felt the house shake. And the next time it shook, <laughs> it was gone. <laughs> the National Weather Service says it was an EF-1 tornado with winds at 87 miles an hour. Don't ever remember it turning over, but I was still standing up when it stopped. I don't. I was standing on the ceiling instead of the floor. I don't. <laughs> A neighbor called 911, and first responders found the home on its top. Arthur says he was able to walk out, but his wife and sister-in-law needed help. My sister-in-law's leg was underneath the rafter. They had to cut that out in order to get her out. And my wife, she was laying there right at her feet. All three have been released from the hospital. Today he came back to dig through what used to be his home. Sore. <laughs> Scratched up, cut up, bruised, but we're living. Dallas Arthur tells me they'll be staying with his daughter until they can get everything worked out with his insurance company. In Pendleton County, Victor Puente, WKYT. The emergency management director says the tornado also took down several barns. Emergency crews rescued a woman from the roof of her vehicle after it stalled in flooded waters. Anderson County Emergency Management Director Bart Powell says the Swiftwater rescue happened last night on Anderson City Road off Highway 62. Heavy rains caused a small stream to flood covering the road. The woman had driven about 35 yards out when her car stopped and she called 911. It was a deadly 24 hours. At least 11 people are dead after several tornadoes, including an EF3, tore through the south. Mississippi's governor has declared a state of emergency. CBS's Omar Villafranca has a look at the damage. Many in the south are spending Christmas Eve cleaning up after severe weather spawned several tornadoes Wednesday. Dozens of homes were destroyed and thousands left without power. Mississippi's governor declared a state of emergency. It, it is uh, difficult, particularly this time of year, uh, to see such damage and know uh, that heartbreaks are, go along with that damage. This twister, spotted in Holly Springs, Mississippi, is believed to have been on the ground for more than 100 miles. It tossed several cars into the air, killing a seven year old boy. Marvin Sims and his wife survived the storm in their bathroom. The roof was blowing off the house. And I just hold, hold on, hold on, and I held on to it as tight as I could. In Pope County, Arkansas, an 18-year-old was killed when a tree crashed into her bedroom. The severe weather is now moving east. There will be a risk of tornadoes all the way across the southeast, damaging wind gusts with these clusters that develop and continue right on through the afternoon and early evening. Spring-like temperatures fuel the rare winter tornadoes. In much of the east, the only frozen precipitation to fall was hail. Behind the storms, record smashing warm weather arrived. It was in the low 70s in New York this Christmas Eve. That's normal for May. And in Vermont, playing outside meant bare elbows and knees instead of snowboards and skis. More seasonable temperatures are expected by New Year's. Omar Villafranca, CBS News. Investigators from the National Weather Service are out surveying the damage and trying to figure out just how powerful those tornadoes were. Much, much calmer mm -hmm. today in the weather department. It's a gorgeous day, a perfect time to be outside. 
Here's a time lapse of ice skaters this afternoon in downtown Lexington. So, if you were expecting a white Christmas at this point, you're going to have to settle for a wet one. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell is tracking it all in the First Alert Weather Center. And, Jim, a warm day to be skating. Uh, it, it is, and uh, that's as close as you're going to get to anything white or wintry related for this Christmas, at least. We do have winter showing up in our seven day forecast, but the problem is we keep getting hit by spring like weather with showers and thunderstorms. Thunderstorms have sparked more flood concerns for the folks across southeastern Kentucky. You can see from Somerset to Pikeville covered up with a flood watch that goes into effect tomorrow morning and it runs through your Saturday as well as we can see some more rounds of heavy rain sweeping into the area. Out there at the moment, we're in between a lot of activity. You can see the clouds thickening up uh, in the skies there from uh, down in Middlesbrough through Hazard and to Prestonsburg. The clouds have increased and they will continue to do so from uh, south to north all across Kentucky. You see those showers and storms that we see across uh, Atlanta right now? Eventually, they'll start lifting back toward the north. There'll be a little wave of energy along, kind of enhance it and push it right back into our area. And you can kind of see how this all plays out by early tomorrow morning. See the showers start breaking out. We go through our evening into the early morning. Rain starts showing up. Again, notice it's going to be drifting in here from our south, not from our north. There's some showers out there, but that's not the area that will impact us. Santa shouldn't have any issues tonight, but as we get into the day tomorrow, we'll all have some issues with those rounds of rain. We'll track it uh, a little more in detail coming up for you here in just a few minutes. Police went to a southern Kentucky home at the request of a social worker and ended up making a disturbing find. Whitley County Sheriff's deputies say the home on River Road had roaches crawling everywhere. As WKYT's Phil Pendleton shows us, that visit ended with children being removed from the home and their parents behind bars. The house on River Road, about six miles east of Williamsburg, was a stop for a social worker Wednesday. She wanted to check up on the small children living there, but she also had some surprises for them. And they were also taking gifts to the three children. Only she was the one who got the surprise. Once she arrived at the residence, she was denied entrance to the residence. Then police say she saw the mother and father load up the three kids and try to run away. Five miles down the road, they were stopped. The driver, 51-year-old James Walker, was cited for traffic offenses. He and his wife, 39-year-old Deanne, were taken back to the house where police say they found deplorable conditions. Going through the residence, cockroaches came from the ceiling and got on Deputy Cody Harrell. <laughs> In fact, police say the residence reeked of cat urine and cockroaches were literally running all over it. Some neighbors told me that they knew there were problems in this house and they say they are glad that the walkers were arrested and the children taken away. They say they knew these children were living in filth and that they were living in such a way that they feared something bad would eventually happen to them. Both were arrested and charged with endangering the welfare of a minor. The children were all less than six years old. It's just the filth in the residence that was a concern. Police say social services took custody of the kids in Whitley County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. And we were told this afternoon that the walkers were in the process of being released from the Whitley County Jail. Kentucky State Police are investigating a hit and run that left a pedestrian dead. Our county by county coverage at 5 begins in Wolf County. State Police say a vehicle struck 32 year old Jamie Robinson of Campton about 4 this morning. He was walking north on Kentucky 191 just outside town when he was hit. Emergency crews found Robinson on the road. Police are still looking for the vehicle that hit him. The U.S. Postal Inspection Service is investigating mail thefts reported in Lincoln County and surrounding areas. A spokeswoman for the U.S. Post Office in Stanford told the Advocate Messenger that Michael Marlowe was arrested in connection with the thefts. Last week, a Somerset man found a bag of opened envelopes and packages along the bank of Cedar Creek Lake. The mail was addressed to people in Danville, Lancaster, and Stanford. Police are now in the process of trying to return all that mail. The Salvation Army kicked off its first ever Miracle on Main Street today in Lexington. As WKYT's Caitlin Sentner explains, the charity originally planned the event to try and reach a fundraising goal, but instead ended up meeting the needs of others. Uh, we overbought a bit, thought some other folks could use them. 
Despite the generosity of many, the Salvation Army is experiencing a shortfall, tens of thousands of dollars short of its goal. On the final day of the Red Kettle campaign, the Salvation Army held its first ever miracle on Main Street. Originally we thought this might help with our shortfall, but then I thought it's, it's, it's about way more than that. I'm moving them over where you can get them. Okay. What do we do? Yeah, yeah. Pray for one. Put it back in. Just put it over on the side. These came in through donations. So they asked the community to share their burdens and drop off prayer requests Christmas Eve. We've been praying over them right here. Well, community members are dropping off donations. Some are dropping off prayer requests. But women living in the Salvation Army shelter are among those asking for a prayer this holiday. Inside, women and children ate lunch waiting for their prayers to be answered. But it was strangers outside reading individual prayer requests and praying. My husband died a year ago. I'm still grieving. And so it doesn't make any difference if I know them or not. I can pray for a name and I can just almost picture them in their home or wherever they are or in a hospital and I can see God coming close to them. Prayers came in from states away and the Salvation Army says prayer is the reason they aren't concerned about a shortfall. In Lexington, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. And the Red Kettle campaign and miracle on Main Street wrapped up late today. One person was killed after an argument at a crowded shopping mall in North Carolina. Detectives from the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department say this was an officer involved shooting. Police said in a statement that off duty officers who were working at the mall arrived at the scene after the fight broke out, and one armed person was shot and pronounced dead at the scene. The North Lake Mall in Charlotte was crowded with shoppers when the shooting happened. The Department of Homeland Security is planning nationwide raids aimed at deporting adults and children who have already been ordered removed by an immigration judge. The Washington Post says the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Operation will begin as soon as next month. The raids will likely affect hundreds of immigrants who fled violence in Central America. A Louisville hospital got an unexpected visitor. Actress Jennifer Lawrence returned to her hometown this week. The Oscar winner made a stop by Cozair Children's Hospital. She met with children who were sick and posed for photos with the staff. Lawrence's new movie called Joy arrives in theaters tomorrow. Several Lexington churches opened their doors today for families to come and celebrate Christmas. Centenary United Methodist Church on Tates Creek Road is holding several different services today. About 100 people out for the noon service. The senior pastor says they're opening their doors in hopes of inspiring people not only for Christmas, but for the entire year. Our focus is not so much on ourselves, but upon other people. Uh, witnessed uh, numbers of instances where persons have reached out. And, and if we do that this season of the year, May we continue to do it as we uh, move through the, the rest of the year. Uh, and in fact, carrying the spirit of Christmas uh, throughout all the year. Centenary United Methodist also has services at 7 and 11 tonight. All right, it's a tradition in the bluegrass that many of you enjoy. Time for the annual All Tech Celebration of Song. We'll be airing that for you tomorrow at noon right here on WKYT. It's time for better living, health education, and consumer news that impacts your life. The holidays may bring family togetherness and excitement, but they can also bring stress, which leads to heart problems spiking during this most wonderful time of the year. A study published in the journal Circulation says the number of cardiac deaths over the holidays is highest on December 25th, followed by the day after Christmas and New Year's Day. Doctors say there are several reasons why heart attacks are prevalent during the holidays, including increased alcohol consumption and smoking. Health experts recommend adults eat about two cups of fruit and up to three cups of vegetables a day. Often we're encouraged to reach for ones that are rich and deep in color. As Holly Furfer shows us, the winter months offer other produce options that may not be as flashy, but are still good for your health. We often hear the more colorful your produce, the healthier. But winter whites, fruits and vegetables that are pale in color, are packed with healthy nutrients as well. Veggies such as white potatoes, cauliflower, turnips, onions, garlic, and even parsnips 
which look a lot like a white carrot. They offer vitamins and nutrients, but they also have some compounds in them that help to fight cancer, fight heart disease, as well as keep your blood pressure in check, as well as cholesterol levels. And though potatoes often get a bad rap, it's what we put on them, not the vegetable itself that's an issue. White potatoes are virtually fat-free. They're also a good source of vitamin C and a great source of potassium, which helps to lower blood pressure levels. Moore says garlic contains a compound that has been shown to reduce the risk for prostate and stomach cancer. And onions have nutrients that help with digestion. And when it comes to winter white fruits, top of the list are the pale flesh fruits, such as apples and pears. There are some studies to show that eating an apple or a pear per day can help to lower the risk of stroke. We can get most produce year round, but when we buy what's in season, it's usually cheaper and tastes better. For today's Health Minute, I'm Holly Furfer. Dieting is difficult, not just because you have to give up many of your favorite foods, but also because you have to cut back on calorie-laden beverages such as wine. Well, now a Florida businesswoman has teamed up with an Italian winemaker to try to change that. They decided to pursue the concept after several customers made the request for lower-calorie wines. 90C has 90 calories and comes in several flavors. You can buy it online at virginiaphilipwineshopacademy.com. For more health education and consumer news, go to WKYT.com and click on Better Living. Now here's what's coming up at 530.